Uh, he mentioned a lot about the Department of Education, and we're going to talk about the Common Core, where we're headed with that, Common Core State Standards, and from Region 3, we have Dr. Ella Thompson. And you don't have to dispel, discount, or do anything, but do you. Can you come down here? All right. Because this is not a debate. It's not anything like that. We don't want to dispel whatever. Do what you do in terms of the Common Core. Now, if there are some factors that you can dispel or correct, we do want to hear that. So, family, let's welcome Dr. Ella Thompson. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I've been with the Department of Education since January of 2013. Prior to that, I've been with Orange County Public Schools, um, served as an administrator since 1999, and uh, with, at the district level since 2002, dealing with struggling schools. So um, this work is important to me, and I'm passionate about helping students to be the best that they can be. Now, um, Here, would you like this? No, no, thank you. Um, I was going to apologize for, oh, no, it's right there. The handouts have the wrong date, and it has the urban league from another area, and I didn't want to um, offend <laughs> anyone here, so, but it's correct on the PowerPoint. I also sense we were, we were family, right? Didn't Monica say that? Okay. I have to say that my husband is here and it's his birthday. And um, he was willing to come with me on his birthday night. So Mr. Tyrone Thompson, if you would just please stand as I honor you for being willing to do that for me. Okay. <laughs>
Each stop is a chance for every parent and teacher to focus on the skills their students are supposed to know at that step, no matter the zip code, language, or race. And more importantly, each standard makes sure all students are learning what they need to know to get to graduation and beyond. Because something like counting to 100 leads to understanding dollars and cents, which eventually leads to understanding how to manage a budget. Secondly, the standards are consistent from school to school, and they match up against international standards too. Now we know how we're doing compared to just about everyone. So even though local communities will still design their own curriculum with the same rules, everybody can compete on the same kind of staircase. But standards aren't learning. That's why we need teachers, parents, and students to help make that happen by working together to help kids meet these standards. The world's getting more and more competitive every day. But now, when our kids get to the top of their staircase, they can have way more options on where their life goes from there. Clear goals, confident, well-prepared students. That's the Common Core State Standard. big enough, I guess not. Um, what it is, it's a what. It means that the common core standards, those are actually what our kids have to learn. We don't tell the districts how they need to do that, the curriculum that they need to use, or the strategies that they need to use. But we do say, because the state of Florida adopted the common core state standards, is that all children will learn these standards at this grade level. And if you notice in the video, it talked about sometimes let me ask you, how many of you have been in different schools and it seems like an A in one school was different than an A in another school or the level of rigor or challenge in one school was a little bit different than the level of rigor or challenge in another school? And believe it or not, sometimes it seems like that the school just kind of assumed that those kids just couldn't do it. So for a little whomever, so they just made it a little bit easier for them because they thought, not maliciously necessarily, that maybe they couldn't do it, or that it was too hard for them. We're saying now, no, all of our kids can learn, and they will learn at high, rigorous levels because we need them to be able to compete globally when they finish high school. We need them to be ready to go on to college, or to go into the workforce, or to start a career. So that's the what. It's what our kids will have to know. It's our expectation as a state, what they will know when they leave uh, high school, and that means they'll be ready if we do it right, to enter into college or to enter into the workforce. The why, why are the standards good for all children? It was in the video, and I shared it with you a minute ago as well. It's because we have the same expectations for all children. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter the level of income in your home. It doesn't matter your neighborhood. We're saying that every kid can learn at high levels, and it's our expectation, regardless of where you are, that you can learn up here, and we expect the teachers to provide instruction that will help kids get there. Because before, as you saw the stair steps, we were all over the place, across the nation, and it just really depended on where you went. So if you went to a school that was in, served a gated community, maybe you had stronger teachers, and you were gonna get A's, and you were gonna be successful, but if you had the bad luck to go to a school that was in a lower socioeconomic level, then your education maybe wasn't as on par as a school across town on, or on the other side of the tracks, since we're family. So we're saying we don't want that anymore. Bottom line is that's not good enough for our children because we really want all of our children to learn, and we know all of them can. So who's going to be utilizing the Common Core State Standards? It's actually voluntary. States have to decide whether they would do it or not. And there are 45 states currently, including the District of Columbia and a couple of territories of the U.S. and the Department of Defense that have agreed to implement the Common Core. There are five states that have not yet <coughs> adopted the Common Core. Who can tell me who those states are? Texas. Okay. <laughs> Texas. Alaska. Alaska. No, Florida, we're doing it. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> and Virginia. I'm going to say this, and I'm not 
I'm not wanting to be offensive at all, but y'all didn't have a cover for it, did you? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I had to look it up myself, honestly, before I came to um, make sure I knew the states that hadn't implemented it yet. So it's voluntary. So the who is the states that decided that they wanted to do it because it was what was best for all kids, and only five states have to, haven't decided to implement it yet. This slide will address the when. We started out with Common Core really about three years ago. Um, it's going to be totally implemented this year and with an assessment that will align with Common Core by 2014-15. So we're actually, it's been on a continuum as we rolled it out. We didn't say automatically K through 12, this is what you're going to do differently. We rolled it out gradually so that our teachers and our districts and our um, schools could get used to it. Now take a look at these skills. Maintain an increased sense of accountability toward their own learning, develop a concept, be of an opinion, and move to support evidence. All of those things, read over it for a few seconds and raise your hand if you have to implement the majority of those things in your day-to-day -day life. Oh, I see him looking like this. Do I need to read it to you? I heard please, no, and yes, so I'm gonna read half of them. <laughs> Maintain an increased sense of accountability toward their own learning. Develop a concept beyond an opinion and move to support and evidence. Think in a more conceptual, analytical, and global manner. Utilize higher order critical thinking skills. Transfer skills to new experiences and to shift from mere memorization of terms to a deep understanding of meaning. If you have to do that every day of your life, raise your hand. Okay, and really those things, how many of you had to really think about it before you could say, yes, I have to do that the or not? If you had, that's not a bad thing. I'm not going to say anything about you not having common core. That's not a bad thing. Most of this, these things have become automatic. It's almost like second nature to adults. Usually, you know to transfer the skills that you've learned over here if they apply over here. We almost do that automatically based on experiences. Well, the changes in our expectations for students includes this, that the common core demands of students that they be able to do this. Because right now we know we're really preparing students for jobs that we don't even know, they don't even exist yet. So mere memorization will not prepare them to be ready once they finish. So we're saying with the Common Core State Standards, you really are going to have to think critically and problem solve and transfer skills into new settings really to be able to make it once you graduate. So that's going to take us away from mere memorization. It's going to cause deeper thinking and problem solving to happen. So in order to get that to our kids, we have to do something about instruction as well. So the changes to instruction, our teachers are going to have to increase rigor. Now I saw educators raise their hand in the room. Now the definition of rigor has really been interesting to try to get everybody to agree on the same thing. So take maybe 15 seconds, talk to your, I'm in the church, right? Talk to your neighbor. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you. Talk to the person next to you about what you think rigor means. 15 seconds. I should hear some buzz, some talking. What is rigor? I see. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring you back to the um, poll group. Now, who wants to, if I, how much time do I have? Just about another minute. Okay. So ponder on that and think about it when you get home. What, what is your weird? So read it when you get home. Think about it when you get home. Okay, well, not only are we making it more rigorous for our students, but we know that it's going to take our teachers. Um, it's a different way of instructing so that they're actually facilitating learning and they're not the ones that were the purveyors of learning at the front of the room and we do all the heavy lifting and the thinking and the kids just sort of take notes and, and memorize and all of that, that's not the way this instruction should be. So very quickly, what does Common Core look like? You can tell the difference. Trace and evaluate the argument and specific claims in a text, assessing whether the reasoning is sound and the evidence is relevant and sufficient to support the claims. That's a Common Core standard. The old standard would say the student uses a variety of strategies to comprehend grade level text. Both of those are rigorous, but the, the common core one, you're going to have to really think about how to apply it, 
and then you're going to have to make some assumptions. You're going to have to take from the text some ideas about whether it's right or not. And this is really um, important, that type of thinking, because when we think about propaganda and different things that come out with um, in the culture that we live in today, our kids need to really be able to read something and know whether it really is sound or if it's um, accurate without just believing everything that they read because it was in the newspaper or in a book or because it was someone's manifesto. So it really is getting our kids to think. That was a seventh grade standard. This is a sixth grade one. I'm gonna go really quick because uh, Miss May is gonna um, get the hook in just a minute. Um, that's the math standard at the sixth grade level. And again, you can tell the difference in that the amount of thinking and problem solving a kid will have to do. Um, I'm gonna get very quickly to how we're gonna support it in high poverty schools. We had Common Core Summer Institutes for teachers across the state, about 13,000 teachers participated. We had DA academies as differentiated accountability across the state and over 1,700 teachers and administrators from struggling schools attended those academies. And then we have DA regional support teams. I'm a regional executive director for Region 3. I have a team of about 18 and we go into the struggling schools within Region 3 and we support them with common core implementation as well as putting systems in place that will help sustain the improvement in student achievement. The big thing with all of that is that it really takes all of us and the Department of Education can't do it alone. Um, the school can't do it alone when we have struggling schools. We really need parent involvement. We need the community involvement. We need church involvement. We need business involvement really to get things moving so that we can accelerate um, our momentum. We put the standard here and it's challenging and it really, our hope is it's gonna even the playing field. So it doesn't matter that your zip code or your ethnicity or the income of your parents on whether you get a good education or not. The state of Florida has decided everybody is going to be held to this standard and we expect our teachers to teach all of our kids at this level because we believe that our kids can learn at high levels. Doesn't matter where they are. The state of Florida believes that our kids can learn at high levels and that's what we expect our schools to do. And we're in to support our native schools with regional teams across the state to make sure that happens. Am I good? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, hubby, for spending your birthday with us. <clears throat> How many educators knew about the Common Core? I would, I would expect that you all knew about that, all right? How many community leaders do we have in this room? If you're a community leader, raise your hand, please. How many of you knew about the Common Core standards? Okay. How many parents, just average Ada parent or Bill average parent, how many of you knew about the Common Core Standards? Okay, all right. How many in the room, and we're family, so for those of you that came in, you know, after we started, we're just about educating one another tonight. How many of you are learning about this change in our children's education for the first time tonight? Okay, all right, so it's good that you're here. Very good that you're here. Um, Dr. T, I'm so glad that you did not have to debate, negate, or anything like that, that you just educated us. I appreciate you for doing that because there's often going to be people that agree or disagree with how the Department of Education is running. I just have a quick question, and you may not like this one, but does the governor know about all this? Does he know that we change in standards? Does he know that the expectation level has changed? for minority students? Yes. Is he willing to really impact economically to support our teachers and our students in minority and low-income communities? That is a wonderful question. Oh, there's a mic on the table. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, I heard somebody say something about election time. Who said that? <laughs> and I mean, you really can't answer for. Uh, I really can't. Um, what is it? I, I can talk about the Department of Education, and I will tell you without a doubt, I am really excited. I was a part of the um, Black and Hispanic Male Study in Orange County, where we realized that the, our minority, especially our minority boys, are way behind. So this is not new. We've been really trying to figure this out and put things in place. And we realize oftentimes um, it's not the kids. 
We know that. It's not that kids, certain kids, it's not that certain kids don't learn. That's not true. That, that's a misnomer. It's about the instruction. Now, whether the money's gonna go in place for teachers and all of that, I'm not in the budget department, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. I agree with you wholeheartedly that money needs to go there, but um, I really can't speak to mm -hmm. that from the governor's office. But, okay. okay. So I thought it was a cool it's a good question. question. It, it really was a good question. I just don't I have just, an answer. And, I, and we knew that too, and it's okay. <laughs> I just wanna, all right. So at this point, you should have written a couple of questions down. Have you? Y'all nod your head and say no. Okay, thank you. All right. We're gonna keep moving because we, we're gonna save those for last. But Isha Haley, oh my gosh. I did not meet this, well, I didn't meet the panel until this evening except Dr. T. Um, but she's the executive director of Black Floridians Care. She's going to tell you more about that. But the mission is to prepare black school leaders to open high quality schools in low income urban communities. She's got over 10 years of experience. That, well, I, that would be from emotion. But you, you, you've seen Michelle and Barack do this? and it became nationally respected, interpreted in many ways. But when you meet a sister and they're on a mission, they've defined the mission and they're traveling on that, man, I gotta give her a fist bump. So wait till she gets up here. She's worked in both the tradi traditional and school choice sector and strongly believes that all children deserve choice. She has a master's in urban education, a master's in public administration, yet her greatest credential is being a servant leader and using education as a tool for ministry. All right. You should come on and talk to us about the uh, solutions now that we're going to be faced with in the black community that will involve leadership, community, and family, but from a black social capital and talent pipeline standpoint, okay?